So my old Casio uh, brother P-Touch printer was giving me some trouble. Um, and what was happening is it takes um, six AA batteries giving me nine volts of power. But if it drops below, uh, say, eight volts, it stops functioning properly. So what I did in the past is I opened it up here. And I used one of my 18650 um, 3.7 volt batteries along with a TP4056 and a boost converter here to power it and it was working uh, perfectly fine but what I decided that I wanted to do was to actually make it uh, so that I can use a wall wart or some sort of power adapter rather than having to use one of my 18650s because there's really no reason for this to to need to be portable um, you can you can easily use this on a desk and just plug it in instead so in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the existing um, battery power that I have for it. And I'm going to replace it. Well, I'm basically going to replace all of this with, and this is a buck converter. And what it does is it's going to drop down the voltage that's coming into it. In this case, I have a 19 volt. Um, this was from a monitor that I'm no longer using. Um, but this is still very useful. This puts out 19 volts and it can put out a total of um, two amps of output, which is more than enough. Um, I don't need that much power. This thing uh, says that it's only uh, nine volts and uh, nine watts of power, which uh, is one amp um, required at max. Uh, and I doubt that it ever actually gets that high. It's probably about half of that for the, uh, for the printing module in it. But just to be safe, uh, let's call it one amp, which is going to give us that nine watts of power. This is supposedly rated for three amps of power. However, I have seen videos on YouTube where people put too much power into it and it blows up or it burns out. You get the magic smoke. So I would not recommend using it for any sort of high current application. Uh, in this case, I think it should be fine for this, uh, for this printer here. It's not going to use that much power. So it's not going to really, you know, put so much current through it and possibly burn out any of the, uh, any of the burn out any of the components within it. Um, so this particular module, uh, it's extremely small. You can see how small it is here. It's a very small module. Uh, it allows you to do two different things, or it has two different options. One is you can use the potentiometer here to adjust the voltage, or if you bridge. One of these pads here, you can have it at a fixed voltage. So what I'm going to do is to bridge over this nine volt, so that I don't have to worry about the potentiometer getting hit or moved or changed or anything happening to it. It'll stay fixed at nine volts. But first off, let me just show you how this works here. So I have an input ready to go. And let's see here. So we want V in. which are these two and ground is that one. And then we have out coming out here and just double checking. Okay. That looks correct. And I have my multimeter here. So let me grab out and ground. Okay. And I'll go ahead and plug this in. When I put this in, we should hopefully not get any magic smoke and we'll see some voltage on the meter. Okay, so it's currently at seven volts and you can just adjust the potentiometer here and change that voltage quite easily. It's very sensitive, I noticed. So I could have it go up quite a bit. Uh, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep it down and I could set it at 9 volts. I'm actually going to put it at 7 volts. Just so I know that switching it over to 9 volts is working properly when I do the solder bridge. Okay, I'll unplug this and turn this off. And now let's take a look in the Casio itself. So let me unscrew it. So 
So when I originally did it in order to make this all fit in here, I had to cut away a lot of the battery assembly. And as I said, this, this setup uh, works, works well. There's no problem with it. Um, I just wanted it to be able to plug into a wall adapter instead of having to use one of my 18650s. Take the tape off. And open it up. Make sure I got all the screws. Oh, there might be another one underneath this actually. Let me see here. Oh, that was the PCB board that I had it down on originally in order to hold it in place. Let me unscrew this last screw here. Hopefully that'll do it. Okay, that's it. So this is the switch that holds that. And then we can see that there's only two wires that we need to play with here for the positive and the ground. Um, let's just make sure that there's no power on those capacitors. Make sure those are shorted out so I don't get a nasty shock. Yep, those are fine. Okay, so next one I'm going to do is to drill out the side here, which is where the barrel jack is going to go. So that should fit in here. Once I remove all this former project gunk. Okay. I'm um, wondering if I hot glued this. No, I didn't hot glue it. I actually just used sticky tape. Okay. Like that. So hopefully this barrel jack um, should fit in here. Just barely. Okay, so why don't I go ahead and do that and when I come back um, we'll take a look at it and hopefully it'll all be working. This is a very simple hack um, so there's not much to really show. Just a little bit of soldering, very minimal amount of soldering. I just need to connect the, uh, the wires to the barrel jack and then uh, solder bridge this over here and then the output is then going to snake through the hole that I had already put here and into these two connections. Pretty simple. All right, so that took me a little bit more time than I expected. Uh, and that was mainly because drilling this barrel jack, I didn't have a drill bit that fit this perfectly. So I had to cut it with the drill bit and just kind of roughly make a circle out of it and then was able to pop that in. So soldered ground to it um, input coming into the input output coming onto the output and if we test the voltage i'll go ground over here and output over here we're getting 8.75 uh, which is good enough for this i was hoping to get an even nine but it looks like it's putting out nine uh, just under nine volts which uh, should work for this no problem and switch it over turn it on Sometimes you will get an error message on it, but it looks like it's working fine now. So let me actually see if I can repeat that just to show you what you might see. So you get that error message, uh, just hit set, set. Those are the different um, settings that you can do for it. And now I can go ahead and print something out. That's it. 